G'day mate, welcome to Captain Industry with me, Jenny. Today we're going to talk about all things water. Why water? Well, because water is the lifeblood of the colony, and as with most island dwellers, water is actually pretty important to the game. It's pretty important to the expansion of your colony, it's pretty important to the farms, it's also very important when you start plugging it into the housing that you don't run out, otherwise cholera will probably break out. But anyway, with all that out of the way, I'm, I'm going to remind you guys of a couple of things. One, there are chapters down the bottom because we're going to be covering this in basically three different sections. First off, we're going to cover how to actually get clean water, how to make clean water. Wow capture clean water. Uh, we're also going to cover how to reclaim some of the clean water or some of the water you're actually using and bring it back into the system. We're also going to finally, of course, cover our living on an island, how to convert seawater into something a little bit more palatable drinkable yes uh and at the same time i'm gonna get this out of the way i like getting this out of the way early in, in the video can i just borrow a like i just want to borrow it from now by all means you can have it back later on in the video if you don't think the video is worth it if you didn't learn anything along the way but for the moment can i just borrow it just just for a couple of minutes anyway with that out of the way let's talk about all things water so first off we have well we should give an honorable mention to the good old rainwater collector the rainwater collector does its job it collects the rain when the rain does fall now it has a couple of shortfalls it only works when it rains but it makes up for that by being incredibly cheap at just 20 construction construction parts and 30 wood it also has the catch of it's incredibly large so something to keep in mind uh, i will mention very very quickly that if you happen to be chopping down a whole forest and you have some clear space and you want to put these guys down um now that we can copy whoop copy and paste pipes if you can get the pipes to build in a straight line um if you make sure there's a connector at the front and you can put two of these face to face and then copy the whole thing and providing you line up all the pipes correctly you can just plug end to end sure the trucks are going to have a very hard time building this but you know with uni you can build anything anywhere so uh yeah honorable mention to the rainwater harvester i will mention very very quickly if you choose to rely on these please put some tanks at the end but they do have a small internal buffer okay they can hold 40 water a piece but put some tanks at the end also do some rough calculations on trying to get how much water is going to flow out the system and out the pipe at once you're probably going to find during heavy rainfall you're going to need a couple of tanks uh, and maybe a couple of different pipes to get all the water out at the same time so rainwater harvester honorable mention that's all you get you're not really worth a whole lot next up we have of course the groundwater pump now the good old groundwater pump um has its pros and has its cons uh one it provides 48 water 48 clean water straight out of the ground the con is it needs to be put somewhere where you have a groundwater deposit so that's a bit of a catch on top of that um it actually has a reserve status so how much water's in that current groundwater that groundwater deposit now my rule of thumb it might not be accurate but it's been my rule of thumb so far is i can run two of these flat out non-stop and i won't drain the reserve again that's going to come a certain amount down to your difficulty that you're playing the game you can change up the game so it's it rains more often you can play on a harder difficulty where it rains way less often I'm playing at just normal the normal difficulty so i found two is fine maybe two and a half but it provides 48 clean water 48 clean water is a great start it's enough to run a power plant we should probably talk about reclaiming some of the water from our power plants next yeah okay over here we have a pretty stock standard power plant sure it's got a little addition on there but we'll talk about that in a second uh we have a boiler it pumps in 48 water, it converts that into 48 steam. The 48 steam obviously goes into two high pressure turbines, each using 24 steam apiece, and then normally you vent it. Because you don't really have a use for the low pressure steam, you obviously can't hook it into, you know, another high pressure, uh, high pressure turbine, but you need to make some power, and it's way more efficient than burning the diesel to make some power. But as the game progresses, you do get some unlocks, and one of the unlocks is a cooling tower. A cooling tower will take 24 steam either the high pressure the low pressure or the depleted if you don't have these you'll unlock them as you progress in the game and it's going to give you back 50 percent of that water so for the 48 water i'm putting in i'm getting 50 percent of that back which means this boiler is not running on 48 water it's running on 24 water because we're prioritizing the water reclaimed from the steam back to the system so this is a step you can take that right direction to start reclaiming some of your water it also means that technically as we're now chewing half as much water we can build twice as many power plants for the exact same water costs yeah yeah something to keep in mind uh speaking of 
power plants twice the size. Um, here is one twice the size with a twice the size cooling tower. So this time we're bringing in 48 water and 48 water being a total of 96 water. We're running into four of the high pressure turbines, each using 24 steam apiece and outputting 24 low pressure steam. And then I'm running that into a very, very large cooling tower. But it also reclaims now, rather than half the water, it reclaims three quarters of the water. Which means for the 96 steam I have coming in, which was originally 96 water, I'm getting back 72 clean water. Which means total of this system runs on 12 water as well. So with the first technology, we could double the size of a power plant for the same water cost. With the increase in technology, we could double the doubling of the size of the power plant with the same water costs. Yeah. Yeah, it, it adds up pretty quick, but um, of course, none of this has covered how to convert the seawater we have everywhere into something a little bit more palatable, a little bit more drinkable. So we should probably talk about that next. Okay, as the game progresses, we get access to a seawater pump. A seawater pump does a logical thing and it pumps up seawater. It pumps up 120 seawater per minute, which is a lot of seawater. And as the game progresses, you get access to the basic distiller. Well, you get access to an extra recipe in the basic distiller. Gotta remember that thing, that thing early on that we used, you know, in the oil recipe to convert all the, 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 the crude into diesel. Well, it got a second life as a distillery. Well, uh, desalinator. Desalinator is probably more accurate. And this guy brings in 60 seawater plus 6 coal to give us 36 clean water and 24 brine, which is an okay start. It's an okay start to this whole process. And actually, let's pump the game speed up to 3. That way we can better see our pipes. Um, and I'm going to work this system in... in, in we're going to work this system around coal, okay? Because I've got a couple of demonstrations we're going to see shortly, and they're all based around using 18 coal. So for our 18 coal, we have uh, three distillers running non-stop. Uh, they are bringing in 180 seawater, so I need to have two of these guys running. And they're going to give us a total of 108 clean water out, which is a decent amount of clean water. Like, if you wanted to go convert that into power... That's at least two boilers running flat out. That's a lot of power before you even start worrying about trying to reclaim some of that steam as back as clean water to loop back through the system. It, it's a good amount of clean water. It is going to cost you 18 coal running flat out, which is actually as much as a boiler is going to cost. So it's not that much. Uh, and it's also going to produce a fair bit of amount of brine. Now, obviously the brine, it's up to you what you do with it. As the game progresses, you actually have uses for brine. But in the early game, well, we use one of those good old liquid dumps. We dump it back in the sea. But as we can see, I am producing, well, one pipe running at 60, non-stop, clean water, one of brine, non-stop. And the clean water, are the second one's kicking in every now and again, now and again, and same with the brine. But the total for this system was um, 18 workers running these three. We're only going to do the calculations around um, what's actually creating the water the water so we've got 18 workers are running the three distilleries plus we have uh 18 coal and that's given us a total of 108 water 108 clean water where you get the sea water and deposit the brine is entirely up to you outside the calculations of this particular video but that steps up to the next version the next version is a little bit more high tech we're gonna run and we're gonna use some power we have a thermal desalinator thermal desalinator runs on steam which of course means we need to get some high pressure steam. We get high pressure steam from a boiler. So we take 48 clean water, which you need to magic up from somewhere. I, I realize you need to magic that up from somewhere, but you take your 48 clean water, you pump this into this system, and each one is gonna use 12 steam a piece, and it's gonna bring in 60 seawater, and gonna give us 48 clean water each, along with some brine. The brine is actually a lower ratio, less brine than the previous step, but, it's still some brine that we're going to have to deal with. And if I zoom out a little bit, we can see that um, first off, I have to have two seawater pumps because we're bringing in 240 uh, seawater apiece. But we're also outputting, uh, I don't know, I didn't look at the brine. Uh, brine is 96 brine. So we have one of these guys running and the other one's running eh, about half the time. And as for clean water, we're actually making 192 clean water in this system, which means two of these are running flat out. Mm, we're also using 48 water in the system. So I run everything through a pipe balancer to prioritize this gets 48 clean water back in. So we're only actually making uh, 144 clean water down from 192. But it means that, yes, I have two clean water taps just running nonstop 
third one kicks in every now and then. And the cost for this one is 20 workers. It's also 100, 160 kilowatts worth of power. So it's going to start adding on your power grid. So it's something you need to keep in mind. But as you can see, there's a couple more recipes that you unlock as you play the game. So let's talk about the next recipe. Next recipe we have over here, which is slightly different. Uh, it's using low pressure steam. So where do we get low pressure steam? Well, remember back to our power plant. We're going to run 48 water into a steam, uh, into a boiler, uh, which is going to give us 48 steam. 48 steam, we're going to run into the high pressure turbines, which is going to give us two lots of 24 low pressure steam, which is exactly what we want. We want 48 steam. It's also going to give us uh, 3, 6, uh, 1.2, 1.2 uh, megawatts. So let's go with 1,200, 1,200 kilowatts worth of power running this system nonstop. Now, the power is the byproduct because we actually want the clean water. So as for clean water, it comes into here. The steam comes into this. And rather than using the high pressure, we're now going to use low pressure. And it means we're going to bring in 21 seawater. So less seawater pumps because we have 21 times by 4, which is what, 84? 84. I should write down some of this math beforehand. But it's also going to provide us 24 water times by 4, which is a total of 96 clean water. Okay, sure. 48 of it's going to go back in the boiler. But the other 24 is entirely free. Yeah, it's free clean water. It's 24 clean, free, uh, 48, 48, 48 clean water, absolutely free. And as a byproduct, I made 1.6, no, 1.2 megawatts worth of power. Now, I do need to mention, I need, need to mention very, very quickly that we're also going to use 160 kilowatts actually running the thermal desalinators. So we've only made a bit over a megawatt worth of free power f along with making 24 water. So mix and match at your desire. What do you want? Do you want more, f more clean water? At which point, pump more power into the system. Or do you want more free power with less clean water at which point run a system like this but we're not finished we're not finished because you know as we can see we've, we've got two little pipes and they're both well the clean water is running fairly regularly and the brine is running every now and then we're outputting what 36 brine well the brine's probably running more than clean water is at this stage but we can take this one step further because there's another recipe you unlock as the game progresses this is the depleted steam recipe uh so this one runs through and we put in our 48 clean water and we're going to get out 48 high pressure steam which of course we're going to run into our turbines to convert from high pressure steam to low pressure steam and as a byproduct we're going to make just a little bit of power you know we like making free power but then we can take our low pressure steam and run it through a low pressure turbine to give us depleted steam depleted steam is pretty much useless absolutely useless but we can take that and we can run it into these desalinators okay and the system is very very slow i have warned you it's very slow it probably needs a tank somewhere but for this demonstration it's perfectly fine uh and we're going to put in 12 depleted steam multiplied by four of them so a total of 48 depleted steam and we're going to get out 15 water a piece so we're going to get out a total of 60 water we need to put 48 back in here which means from this system we only get 12 water out just 12 water out but our byproduct of power, we've added another one megawatt worth of mechanical power in the system, which means we've added two more power generators at 300 kilowatts each, which actually means this system outputs uh, just 12 water and 1.6 megawatts worth of power. So this is like a power system. It creates water sort of as a little bit of a byproduct um, but yeah th this is pretty much a water system and as you can see the brine is what three times by four so 12 brine um and 12 clean water it, it really doesn't produce a lot of water at all but it also doesn't take in a lot of seawater. We only need six seawater multiplied by four of them, which is what? 24? 24. 24 clean water. Uh, salt water. Uh, seawater. Salt water. Seawater. Seawater. Seawater is the number I'm going, word I'm going for. So 24 salt uh, seawater. Okay. So you could chain a number of these systems together uh, up against a number of your power plants. And don't forget, every one of them is going to be water positive. So we can add all that water together and eventually have a, a distant, decent water flow. But... That covers most of the systems when it comes for water. Now, I'm going to ask you very, very quickly, we're, we're most of the way through the video, can I keep that like? 
because I'm pretty sure we've covered most of the ways for water. I have left out one, which is an honorable mention, which we're going to mention in a second, but this sort of sums up our water video so, so far. I will ask, again, can I keep the like? Also, at the same time, if you like tutorial videos like this, by all means, hit the subscribe button. There is, of course, a playlist down in the description if you want more Captain Ministry tutorial videos. But finally, we need to get to the honorable mention we're going to throw in at the end, which is, of course, well, it's the wastewater treatment. Now, the wastewater treatment brings in wastewater. The catch is there's not that many things in the game that produce wastewater. There is, well, the basic distiller, which we were using to make crude and the diesel very, very early in the game. We're sort of done with that at this stage because uh, this is pretty late game technology, uh, mid game technology. Uh, we have the rubber maker. So if you're bringing naphtha and coal, you can get out rubber and two wastewater. This guy consumes 160 to go so it's like a whole tank at once just just a little tank just a little storage tank but one of those per go boom um the other option is again the rubber maker with some diesel and some coal you'll get force weight full wastewater which is twice as much that's a lot of wastewater yeah there's not a lot of ways you produce wastewater in the game the biggest one is probably actually the people the people like going to the toilet they like flushing the toilet and who would have thought that that all would needs to go somewhere normally you dump it in the sea but you do have an option and that is the wastewater plant the wastewater plant is going to require wastewater cool we've got that the city produces an astronomical amount of that uh plus also some sand and some chlorine chlorine i'm not going to cover as part of this video oh you could go look that one up yourself. Uh, but you are going to get back 50% of the water as clean water and also some sludge. Don't question what sludge looks like. It probably looks like looks like what you think it looks like. Uh, but this is another system. This is another system we can do to reclaim a whole bunch of clean water. This is more about saving the water before it goes into the colony, before it comes back out of the colony a little bit less... Um, tasteful tasteful and of course as you can see there is a further recipe you unlock further in the game which will take you from a 50 percent return on your clean water up to a 75 percent pretty sure that's 75 percent return on clean water for the sludge you go out that comes out of the sludge sorry the waste water that comes out of the colony you also get more sludge as a byproduct but that is going to be end of this video i do hope you guys have enjoyed it i do hope you found it informative as always don't forget if you're looking for more capital industry tutorial videos there is the playlist down the bottom uh the playlist in the description and also probably in the pinned comment below and there are going to be some upcoming tutorial videos i'm going to do something about mining still uh we've done things on advanced logistics we've spoken about how power works there's a whole bunch of videos down there in that playlist already but there are going to be some more coming up in the next couple of weeks so by all means click the subscribe button swing back have a look for those tutorial videos when they drop or at least get a notification um or you can go check out let's play let's play we're doing wastewater treatment you can see how i set up wastewater treatment and i'm dealing with the um stop who it's it's wastewater wastewater from the colony anyway that's it i'm gonna call it here thank you guys so much for watching do hope you've enjoyed i'll see you guys in the very next video all right bye